And what's been going on is water from rain or snow added with salt has been infiltrating right along that edge and just eating away these beams. That's John Jarvis, the director of the National Park Service, yesterday at a press conference to talk about bridges in the D.C. area, but bridges as large around, uh, at large around the country that are having problems right now that are starting to fail. And one of the people who was there was Representative Don Beyer uh, from the 8th Congressional District of Virginia, and he's with us now on the line. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning. All right, so um, uh, we hear that the, that the Memorial Bridge uh, has got problems, that it needs to be fixed. How did this, like, all of a sudden just crop up? How did we not just see this coming? It wasn't as if just one day it was rusted, where the day before it wasn't. No, no, and we've been seeing this coming for years. The Federal Highway Administration has been inspecting the bridge every 90 days for years and just watching little by little. And, of course, many, many political leaders have been urging us to to pass a new highway funding bill. We've had 32 or 33 short-term extensions of the old bill and no new money since 1993. And little by little, inflation and more fuel-efficient cars have, have really reduced the impact of the, the small budget that we have. So we have um, you know, something like 70,000 bridges in this country that need repair. And, uh, of course, the Memorial Bridge, very important to people uh, in your congressional district because they use it to get to work into the D.C. area. But it's not just the Memorial Bridge in this particular area that has people concerned. No, well, the problem, of course, is that the Memorial Bridge apparently carries more traffic into the city every day than the others. Huh. 68,000 and then 150 buses a day. Those buses are now banned. And it's obviously it's going to make traffic on the 14th Street Bridge, Key Bridge, Theodore Roosevelt Island Bridge significantly worse. Hmm. See, here's what frustrates people, I think, when they hear this. You know, in private buildings, you've got buildings out there where people are working that are older than the Memorial Bridge. Now look at the Empire State Building. I mean, you, you, the, when, when a building is built and and engineers and architects get together and they talk to the owner of the building in the private sector, they say, all right, here's the deal. It's going to take wear and tear. It's going to take corrosion. It's going to need a maintenance fund. And so the business budgets for that. Does the government not do that, or do they misspend the money that is set aside to handle these contingencies? No, the, the government does do that. A, a lot of the Highway Trust Fund is committed to maintenance. I remember a few years ago, I was on the Virginia Commonwealth Transportation Board, and we were looking at a point where 100% of our budget will be just on maintenance, because you do have to keep putting it in. But then we also recognize that uh, our citizens also want new transportation projects to, to deal with, with just growth in population. You know, we, we all hate the fact that our congestion in Northern Virginia, D.C. is the worst in the country, the longest commute times. And this is only, unfortunately, going to make it worse. Well, well before well, what, we... What we be, had is just a failure of, of Congress, and, and I'm not being partisan, this is Democrats and Republicans together, to, to you know, pass the funding that we need from whatever source to make these investments. I think another thing, when you talk about funding then, and because let's, let's set aside new projects, because that's a whole other conversation, but when you talk about fixing the broken infrastructure, which seems to be the buzzword so many use, and, and funding that goes along with that, many of us were concerned about the trillion-dollar stimulus package the president ha uh, passed in 2009. And at that time, he had Nancy Pelosi as his speaker, and he had Harry Reid as his majority leader. And he pretty much got whatever he wanted. We were told at the time that that stimulus money would fix our crumbling bridges and infrastructure. Do you know how much of that money actually went to those projects? Well, that wasn't what we were told at the time. And the president couldn't do everything he wanted to do. His, his political advisors were saying we needed $2 trillion to actually work our way out of the Great great Recession. Instead, he got 884 or something like that. And that was spread over many, many different departments. I mean, it saved all kinds of law enforcement jobs, teachers' jobs. Um, you know, a lot of other investments went along. I don't know exactly what percentage of it went to roads. 3%. But, but, the answer but, is 3%. Okay, because so, none of it was intended to bump up the highway trust fund which is where the real need is um okay but you know i i can quote the president himself when he said this money will go to our badly needed crumbling infrastructure and fix our roads and bridges now you may think that we weren't told that but i was an american citizen then i am now and i remember what we were told by the president and a lot of us now think hold on a minute only three percent of that money went to these quote-unquote shovel-ready projects and now they want more money well, there, there's a lots of shovel-ready projects that aren't part of the, the nation's highway system. 
we were you know building laboratories. We were doing lots of defense work. We were building oh, embassies but, in Iraq. But come on, Congressman, you know he was out there with the hard hat and the shovel. He he was talking about roads. I, I can't remember this president not talking about more money when he's not standing in front of a bridge. I I, I really I think we were sold a bridge in this case. Well, and the, the president, to his great credit, last year uh, asked Congress for a major infrastructure bill, um, the, the Highway Trust Fund, the, the the piece of legislation we had in place for most of our lives which hasn't had any renewal of revenue since 1993, 22 years. And, uh, and that's, you know, there's a little, little debate about whether it should be an increased gas tax or whether we should take overseas profits and bring them back or whatever. But we need to do something um, because we're, we're falling behind little by little. Okay. And our infrastructure investment pales in comparison to China's right now. Can I ask you a question about something that's happening in the news of the day? And I find that many Americans are finding it quite disturbing to learn this morning that the TSA uh, and and the spot checks that they do, they they bring in a red team, and the goal of the red team is to see if they can can take these fake guns and fake bombs and, and work them through security to see how effective the TSA is doing its job. Turns out that 95% of the time, the Transportation Safety Administration did not catch the bomb. A 95% failure rate. And I think many Americans are saying, what, what are we going through at the nation's airport where they make you take off your clothes and your shoes and they, you, know, you go through all of that screening and all of that hassle if indeed they're not getting it done? Well, it is discouraging, but I don't think we should be you know, that pessimistic about it. A lot of what the red teams are doing is bringing it to the most sophisticated devices, the things that the terrorists may get some months or years from now, just to make sure that we tune up the systems to find the things. But but you do know, you think all, that people who would have a, would you? I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I mean, do you no, think no, that no. the people who who want to do harm to uh, you know our country would not use the same technology? Would not try to use the the cleverest technology they could oh, come up with? Oh, 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 I think that they would absolutely. Well, which it, is why yeah, we're, we're constantly trying to find contractors who will. We'll find that cutting edge and then redesign our systems to make sure that we catch it. I think a lot of people say, you know, look, we don't have security right now. If 95% of the tests that they conduct slip through the system, we just have the illusion of security. So, really, we don't have any security at all, do we? Well, on the other hand, you have to look at the enormous number of arrests and, and stops that TSA has made with people bringing knives and guns through. And, uh, and the fact that, you know, God bless us, we, we haven't had a major terrorist incident, an international one from, from uh, you know, the, the, say, hey. ISIS or Al-Qaeda since 9-11. Hang We've on, hang gone on. now hang 14 on. years. Your response of this 95% failure of this test is, well, look at all of the stops that TSA has made? No, no, it's, it's that we have to learn from the 95%. Oh, I'm all right. glad that we have these red teams that say, Here's what's not working. Here's what's not getting caught. It so seems like something pretty fundamental and large is not working at the TSA, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, I, I don't know the details of it, but my hope is that these red teams that come in are trying to stretch the boundaries, trying to say, okay, we've got the easy stuff. Now let's see if we, what we have to do to get the hard stuff. All right. Um, well, just, uh, you better look at, I mean, you should look at that report. We've read about it pretty extensively this morning, and this was not stretching the boundaries. We had people who were walking through. They had bomb material strapped to their back. And the the alarm at the monitor went off. They were frisked, and then they were let go. Yeah, so I mean, this this is a pretty it's, very it's absurd. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sir. Well, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Greatly appreciated. Okay. Thanks so much. Thanks yeah. for the invitation.